Hi, I'm Associate Professor Melinda Copeland from Monash University, and I'd like to briefly showcase a paper that my team has recently published in the journal Science Advances that describes some of our research on the role of processed foods in chronic disease. So the availability of processed thermally treated foods has increased substantially over the past decades. And we know that excess consumption of processed foods is associated with an increased risk of diseases such as diabetes, hypertension and obesity, but we don't know what drives this. I was fascinated to explore the mechanism behind this. So my team set up a model where we could study this experimentally in rodents. And so first we fed groups of rats either an unbaked diet or a baked diet. And what this baking does is create something called Maillard reaction products. And these Maillard reaction products are formed when amino acids on proteins react with sugars, reducing sugars to create Maillard reaction products or advanced glycation end products. And these reactions produce hundreds of chemical compounds that give colour and aroma to some of our, our very favourite foods, such as roast meat, potato chips, bakery products and confectionery. So after six months of feeding this baked diet, we found that the kidneys of these rats became damaged um, and essentially they had developed chronic kidney disease, which affects around 10% of the population worldwide. And so it's a huge problem. And in particular, because chronic kidney disease is progressive. And so next we then looked for clues as to how this kidney damage occurred. And we discovered that the chronic intake of this baked diet switched on danger signals in the body that led to an inflammatory response. And we found that it was the complement pathway that was activated in the circulation of these rats. And we also found local kidney activation of complement C5A, which is a potent pro-inflammatory effector molecule. Intervening with an orally active C5A receptor inhibitor to block this signaling pathway, reversed the kidney damage, proving that complement was a pathogenic pathway. Next, we wanted to look upstream from the kidney and the circulation to see what might promote this complement activation. And so we know that most of the diet-derived Maillard reaction products or otherwise known as advanced glycation end products or AGEs, escape digestion and absorption and pass through the gastrointestinal tract into the colon where they are available as um, substrates for gut microbial metabolism. And so we repeated our processed food feeding study, this time in a mouse model, and we looked at the gut. And so we found that um, mice eating this processed food diet along with kidney damage, had changes to the gut microbiota profile, and they also had an increase in intestinal permeability or leaky gut. Next, we intervened with a rescue diet targeted to this gut microbiota. So we generated a bait diet, but this time we modified the diet to include a special fiber, which escapes digestion and reaches the colon to be fermented by the gut microbiota. And this specialised uh, fibre, known as resistant starch, was fed to diabetic mice, which have an increased susceptibility to chronic kidney disease. And so feeding this resistant starch diet changed the profile of the gut microbiota and improved the severity of kidney damage in these diabetic mice. And so essentially what these studies have shown is a novel mechanism by which highly processed foods can cause innate immune inflammation that thereby promotes chronic kidney disease. And so now that we've unlocked this key piece of information, we can now make alternative food formulations or functional foods aimed at dampening the response to eating highly processed foods.